The structure and function of the nervous system in animals is a complex and fascinating topic that has been the subject of much study and investigation. The nervous system plays a crucial role in controlling the movements, sensations, and behavior of animals, and it is essential for their survival and well-being. The nervous system is comprised of two main components, the central nervous system, CNS, and the peripheral nervous system, PNS. The CNS is composed of the brain and spinal cord, while the PNS is made up of the nerves that run throughout the body. The CNS is responsible for processing and integrating sensory information, as well as controlling motor output. It is the site of conscious thought, perception, and decision-making. The brain is the most complex organ in the nervous system, and it is made up of several different structures that are specialized for specific functions. The brainstem is responsible for regulating vital functions such as breathing and heart rate, while the cerebellum is involved in coordination and balance. The cerebral cortex is responsible for higher cognitive processes such as perception, thought, and memory. The PNS is responsible for transmitting information from the CNS to the rest of the body, and from the body back to the CNS. It is divided into two main branches, the somatic nervous system, which is responsible for controlling voluntary movements, and the autonomic nervous system, which regulates the body's internal functions. The autonomic nervous system is further divided into two branches, the sympathetic nervous system, which prepares the body for action in response to stress, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which promotes relaxation and rest. This division allows for a balance between arousal and relaxation, and it is essential for maintaining homeostasis. The nervous system is also responsible for transmitting sensory information from the body to the brain. This is accomplished through the use of sensory neurons, which are specialized cells that detect changes in the environment and transmit this information to the CNS. Sensory information is processed in the brain, and it is used to generate a response. In addition to its role in controlling movement and sensation, the nervous system is also involved in a variety of other functions, including learning and memory, emotion, and consciousness. The ability of the nervous system to adapt and change in response to experience is known as plasticity, and it is an important aspect of its function. The nervous system is also closely tied to the endocrine system, which is responsible for secreting hormones that regulate various physiological processes. Hormones play an important role in modulating the activity of the nervous system, and they work together to maintain homeostasis and coordinate the body's response to internal and external stimuli. Another important aspect of the nervous system is its ability to communicate and coordinate with other systems in the body. For example, the nervous system works closely with the musculoskeletal system to control movement, and it interacts with the digestive system to regulate the processing and absorption of nutrients. This coordination is essential for maintaining the overall health and function of the organism. It is also worth noting that the nervous system is highly adaptable and capable of changing in response to environmental and physiological factors. This process is known as neuroplasticity, and it allows the nervous system to alter its structure and function in response to experience, injury, or disease. For example, neuroplasticity plays a role in the development of new neural pathways. In response to learning, and it can also contribute to the development of neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. 
Important to recognize that the structure and function of the nervous system can be influenced by a variety of factors, including genetics, environment, and lifestyle. For example, exposure to toxins, stress, and poor nutrition can have negative effects on the nervous system, while physical activity, sleep, and a healthy diet can support its health and function. Another important aspect of the nervous system is its role in the development of behavior. The nervous system is responsible for processing sensory information and generating responses. And it is also involved in the regulation of complex behaviors such as feeding, reproduction, and social interaction. For example, the nervous system is involved in the regulation of hunger and thirst, and it plays a role in the regulation of sleep and wakefulness. The nervous system is also closely tied to the development of emotions and personality. The brain is the site of conscious thought, perception, and decision-making, and it is also involved in the regulation of emotions and the expression of personality. For example, the limbic system, which is a group of structures in the brain that are involved in emotion and motivation, plays an important role in the regulation of fear, anger, and pleasure. Another important aspect of the nervous system is its role in the development of consciousness. Consciousness is a complex and poorly understood phenomenon, but it is thought to involve the integration of sensory information and the generation of an awareness of the external world. The nervous system is involved in the regulation of consciousness, and it is also involved in the development of sleep and the regulation of the sleep-wake cycle. In addition to its role in the development of behavior and consciousness, the nervous system also plays a role in the development of language and communication. The nervous system is involved in the processing of speech and language, and it is also involved in the development of language abilities in children. For example, the nervous system is involved in the development of grammar and syntax, and it is also involved in the development of the ability to understand and use language. Worth noting that the nervous system is vulnerable to a variety of neurological disorders and diseases. These disorders can have a wide range of symptoms and effects, and they can range from relatively mild conditions, such as headaches and sleep disorders, to more serious conditions, such as Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Understanding the structure and function of the nervous system is essential for the development of effective treatments for these conditions. It is also worth noting that the nervous system can be studied using a variety of methods and techniques. For example, neuroimaging techniques, such as magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, and positron. Emission tomography, PET, can be used to visualize the structure and function of the brain and nervous system. Electrophysiological techniques, such as electroencephalography, EEG, and electromyography, IMG, can be used to measure the electrical activity of the nervous system. Additionally, behavioral studies can be used to investigate the relationship between the nervous system and behavior. For example, studies of learning and memory can help to uncover the mechanisms by which the nervous system processes and stores information. Similarly, studies of emotion and motivation can shed light on the role of the nervous system in regulating these complex processes. It is also important to recognize that the nervous system is a highly conserved system that is present in all animals, from simple invertebrates to complex mammals. Despite the differences in structure and function between species, the basic principles of the nervous system remain largely the same across all animal groups. 
Understanding these principles is essential for understanding the evolution of the nervous system and the role it has played in the development of life on Earth. Worth mentioning that the nervous system is a rapidly advancing field, and new discoveries are being made all the time. Advances in technology, such as the development of optogenetics and the use of stem cells for regenerative medicine, are offering new avenues for research and treatment of neurological disorders. The development of an animal embryo is a complex and fascinating process that takes place within the confines of the egg. The process of development can be divided into various stages, each marked by unique changes in the structure and function of the developing embryo. The development of the egg and the embryo varies across different species of animals, with each having unique features and characteristics. In this essay, we will explore the various stages involved in the development of animal eggs and embryos, highlighting the key features and processes that occur. Fertilization The process of embryonic development begins with fertilization, which occurs when the sperm and the egg unite to form a zygote. Fertilization typically occurs within the female reproductive tract, either in the oviduct or the uterus, depending on the species. The process of fertilization is a critical step in embryonic development, as it marks the beginning of the process of cell division and differentiation. Cleavage Following fertilization, the zygote undergoes a series of rapid cell divisions, known as cleavage. During this stage, the zygote divides into multiple cells, each of which is known as a blastomere. The process of cleavage is crucial in establishing the basic body plan of the developing embryo and generating a population of cells that will give rise to the various tissues and organs of the animal. Gastrulation As cleavage continues, the blastomeres undergo a process of rearrangement, known as gastrulation. During this stage, the blastomeres migrate and differentiate to form the three germ layers of the embryo, the endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. The endoderm gives rise to the digestive system and associated organs, while the mesoderm forms the muscles, bones, and circulatory system. The ectoderm gives rise to the skin, nervous system, and sensory organs. Organogenesis Following gastrulation, the embryo undergoes a period of rapid growth and differentiation, during which the various organs and tissues begin to form. This stage, known as organogenesis, is marked by the formation of the major organs, such as the heart, brain, liver, and lungs. As the organs develop, they begin to take on their characteristic shapes and functions, laying the foundation for the mature animal. Fetal Development The final stage of embryonic development is fetal development, which marks the period of growth and maturation of the fetus. During this stage, the developing animal undergoes a series of physical and behavioral changes, as it prepares for life outside the egg or womb. This period is marked by the development of the respiratory and circulatory systems, the growth of the limbs and digits, and the acquisition of various sensory and motor abilities. While the process of embryonic development follows a general pattern across many species, there are significant differences in the timing, duration, 
and mechanisms of development between different groups of animals. For instance, in mammals, the fertilized egg undergoes a process of cleavage and division before implanting in the uterus, where it is nourished by the maternal blood supply. In contrast, in birds, the egg is laid outside the body and undergoes development within the protective shell, with the developing embryo obtaining nutrients from the egg yolk and albumin. Another critical aspect of embryonic development is the role of genetic regulation and environmental factors in shaping the developmental process. Many genes and signaling pathways are involved in controlling the sequence of events that occur during embryonic development. Environmental factors such as temperature, oxygen levels, and nutrients can also impact embryonic development, leading to variations in developmental outcomes. The study of embryonic development has significant implications for various fields, including evolutionary biology, medicine, and agriculture. By understanding the mechanisms and processes involved in embryonic development, researchers can gain insights into the evolution of developmental pathways and the origins of new species. Moreover, the knowledge gained from studying embryonic development can inform medical interventions such as fertility treatments and genetic therapies. One area of particular interest in the study of embryonic development is the role of stem cells in the generation of various tissues and organs. Stem cells are unspecialized cells that have the ability to differentiate into different cell types and can self-renew, dividing to produce more stem cells. During embryonic development, pluripotent stem cells, which have the potential to Differentiate into all the different cell types in the body, give rise to the various cell types that make up the different organs and tissues. The study of embryonic stem cells has significant implications for regenerative medicine. As they have the potential to generate tissues and organs that can be used to replace damaged or diseased tissues, However, the use of embryonic stem cells is controversial due to ethical concerns surrounding the use of human embryos. Another area of interest in embryonic development is the role of epigenetic modifications in shaping the developmental process. Epigenetic modifications are chemical modifications to DNA and its associated proteins that can alter the expression of genes without changing the DNA sequence itself. These modifications can be influenced by environmental factors such as diet, stress, and toxins and can have significant impacts on the development of the organism. Recent advances in technologies such as CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing and single-cell sequencing have revolutionized our ability to study embryonic development and understand the underlying mechanisms involved. These technologies have allowed researchers to manipulate the genome and transcriptome of developing embryos, enabling them to investigate the roles of specific genes and pathways in the developmental process. The process of embryonic development is also influenced by interactions between the developing embryo and its environment. These interactions can include physical forces, chemical signals, and other factors that impact the growth and differentiation of the embryo. For example, the mechanical forces exerted on the embryo as it develops can play a critical role in shaping the structure and function of tissues and organs. The environment can also impact embryonic development through epigenetic mechanisms, as mentioned earlier. Exposure to environmental factors such as chemicals, radiation, 
and stress can lead to changes in epigenetic modifications, which can alter gene expression and impact the developmental process. These changes can have long-lasting effects on the health and well-being of the organism, highlighting the importance of understanding the environmental factors that impact embryonic development. The process of embryonic development can also be impacted by interactions with other organisms, such as parasites or symbionts. For example, in some species of insects, Parasitic wasps lay their eggs inside the developing host insect, where the wasp larvae feed on the developing host tissues. This can lead to changes in the developmental process of the host insect, such as altered growth rates and altered patterns of gene expression. Conversely, symbiotic relationships between organisms can also impact embryonic development. Nimal scales are a common feature among many animal species. These scales serve various functions, such as protection, insulation, and water regulation. The structure and function of animal scales vary widely across species, and the evolutionary adaptations that have led to these variations are of great interest to biologists. In this essay, we will explore the different types and functions of animal scales. Types of animal scales The different types of animal scales can be broadly categorized into three categories, placoid scales, ganoid scales, and cycloid scales. Placoid scales are commonly found in cartilaginous fishes such as sharks and rays. These scales are small and resemble teeth. Ganoid scales are found in bony fishes and are diamond-shaped. Cycloid scales, found in many teleos fishes, are circular or oval in shape. Reptiles also have various types of scales. Snakes and lizards have overlapping scales that protect them from predators and regulate their body temperature. The scales of turtles are fused to their shells and provide an armored protection. Crocodilians have bony plates called scutes that protect them from predators and regulate their body temperature. Mammals have a unique type of scale called hair. Hair is a protein-based structure that covers most of the body of mammals. Hair serves various functions, such as insulation, camouflage, and sensory input. Functions of animal scales Animal scales serve various functions, depending on the species. In fishes, Scales provide protection from predators, reduce drag in water, and regulate the fish's buoyancy. In reptiles, scales provide protection from predators and regulate body temperature. In mammals, hair provides insulation and helps in sensory input. In addition to their primary functions, animal scales have also evolved to serve secondary functions. For example, some species of lizards can change the color of their scales to blend in with their surroundings, providing camouflage. Some species of fish have scales that fluoresce, allowing them to communicate with other members of their species. Some species of mammals have specialized hairs that serve as whiskers, providing sensory input. Evolution of Animal Scales The evolution of animal scales is a fascinating subject of study for biologists. 
Scales are believed to have evolved from dermal denticles, which were bony structures found in the skin of early fishes. As fishes evolved, these dermal denticles became more specialized and gave rise to the various types of scales found in modern fishes. The evolution of scales in reptiles and mammals is less clear. However, it is believed that reptiles and mammals evolved their scales independently from fishes. The scales of reptiles and mammals are thought to have evolved from the keratinized skin that covers their bodies. Functions of animal scales, continued. In addition to the functions mentioned above, animal scales also serve as a defense mechanism against parasites and infections. For example, some species of fish have scales that secrete mucus, which contains antimicrobial peptides that help protect the fish from infections. Animal scales have also been found to play a role in communication. Some species of fish have scales that produce sounds when rubbed together, allowing them to communicate with other members of their species. In addition, some species of reptiles and mammals have scales that are brightly colored, allowing them to communicate with potential mates or rivals. Animal scales have also been used by humans for various purposes throughout history. For example, the scales of some fish and reptiles have been used to make armor and shields. The scales of some mammals, such as the pangolin, have been used in traditional medicine. Evolution of animal scales, continued. The evolution of animal scales is a complex process that involves various genetic and environmental factors. One of the main drivers of scale evolution is predation pressure. Animals that are preyed upon by larger predators have evolved thicker and more protective scales to increase their chances of survival. Another important factor in scale evolution is the environment. Animals that live in water have evolved scales that are more hydrodynamic, reducing drag and increasing swimming efficiency. Animals that live in arid environments have evolved scales that help regulate their body temperature and prevent dehydration. The evolution of animal scales is also influenced by genetic drift and natural selection. Genetic drift refers to random changes in the frequency of genes within a population. While natural selection refers to the process by which organisms with favorable traits are more likely to survive and reproduce. Applications of Animal Scales The unique properties of animal scales have inspired various engineering applications. For example, the design of shark skin has been used to create more efficient swimsuits and Olympic swimming pools. The scales of pangolins have inspired the development of new materials that are strong, lightweight, and flexible. The study of animal scales has also led to the development of new biomimetic technologies, such as sensors that mimic the sensory capabilities of animal scales. Animal scales also play an important role in conservation efforts. The loss of scales due to habitat destruction, overfishing, and poaching has led to the decline of many animal populations. The study of animal scales can help us better understand the ecological roles of these species and develop strategies to protect them. Animal scales are a common feature among many animal species. 
These scales serve various functions, such as protection, insulation, and water regulation. The structure and function of animal scales vary widely across species, and the evolutionary adaptations that have led to these variations are of great interest to biologists. In this essay, we will explore the different types and functions of animal scales. Types of animal scales The different types of animal scales can be broadly categorized into three categories, placoid scales, ganoid scales, and cycloid scales. Placoid scales are commonly found in cartilaginous fishes such as sharks and rays. These scales are small and resemble teeth. Ganoid scales are found in bony fishes and are diamond-shaped. Cycloid scales, found in many teleos fishes, are circular or oval in shape. Reptiles also have various types of scales. Snakes and lizards have overlapping scales that protect them from predators and regulate their body temperature. The scales of turtles are fused to their shells and provide an armored protection. Crocodilians have bony plates called scutes that protect them from predators and regulate their body temperature. Mammals have a unique type of scale called hair. Hair is a protein-based structure that covers most of the body of mammals. Hair serves various functions, such as insulation, camouflage, and sensory input. Functions of Animal Scales Animal scales serve various functions, depending on the species. In fishes, Scales provide protection from predators, reduce drag in water, and regulate the fish's buoyancy. In reptiles, scales provide protection from predators and regulate body temperature. In mammals, hair provides insulation and helps in sensory input. In addition to their primary functions, animal scales have also evolved to serve secondary functions. For example, some species of lizards can change the color of their scales to blend in with their surroundings, providing camouflage. Some species of fish have scales that fluoresce, allowing them to communicate with other members of their species. Some species of mammals have specialized hairs that serve as whiskers, providing sensory input. Evolution of Animal Scales The evolution of animal scales is a fascinating subject of study for biologists. Scales are believed to have evolved from dermal denticles, which were bony structures found in the skin of early fishes. As fishes evolved, these dermal denticles became more specialized and gave rise to the various types of scales found in modern fishes. The evolution of scales in reptiles and mammals is less clear. However, it is believed that reptiles and mammals evolved their scales independently from fishes. The scales of reptiles and mammals are thought to have evolved from the keratinized skin that covers their bodies. Functions of Animal Scales Continued In addition to the functions mentioned above, animal scales also serve as a defense mechanism against parasites and infections. For example, some species of fish have scales that secrete mucus, which contains antimicrobial peptides that help protect the fish from infections. Animal scales have also been found to play a role in communication. 
Some species of fish have scales that produce sounds when rubbed together, allowing them to communicate with other members of their species. In addition, some species of reptiles and mammals have scales that are brightly colored, allowing them to communicate with potential mates or rivals. Animal scales have also been used by humans for various purposes throughout history. For example, the scales of some fish and reptiles have been used to make armor and shields. The scales of some mammals, such as the pangolin, have been used in traditional medicine. Evolution of animal scales, continued. The evolution of animal scales is a complex process that involves various genetic and environmental factors. One of the main drivers of scale evolution is predation pressure. Animals that are preyed upon by larger predators have evolved thicker and more protective scales to increase their chances of survival. Another important factor in scale evolution is the environment. Animals that live in water have evolved scales that are more hydrodynamic, reducing drag and increasing swimming efficiency. Animals that live in arid environments have evolved scales that help regulate their body temperature and prevent dehydration. The evolution of animal scales is also influenced by genetic drift and natural selection. Genetic drift refers to random changes in the frequency of genes within a population. While natural selection refers to the process by which organisms with favorable traits are more likely to survive and reproduce. Applications of Animal Scales The unique properties of animal scales have inspired various engineering applications. For example, the design of shark skin has been used to create more efficient swimsuits and Olympic swimming pools. The scales of pangolins have inspired the development of new materials that are strong, lightweight, and flexible. The study of animal scales has also led to the development of new biomimetic technologies, such as sensors that mimic the sensory capabilities of animal scales. Animal scales also play an important role in conservation efforts. The loss of scales due to habitat destruction, overfishing, and poaching has led to the decline of many animal populations. The study of animal scales can help us better understand the ecological roles of these species and develop strategies to protect them. Vertebrates, or animals with backbones, are one of the most diverse groups of animals on Earth. Vertebrates range in size from the tiny frogs that can fit on a fingertip to the massive blue whales that are larger than the largest dinosaurs ever to roam the Earth. Vertebrates have a number of unique features that distinguish them from other animals, including their skeletal structure, nervous system, and reproductive system. In this essay, we will explore some of the key characteristics of vertebrates and how they have contributed to the success of this diverse group of animals. Body The first and most obvious characteristic of vertebrates is their skeletal system. Vertebrates have a backbone made up of individual bones called vertebrae. This backbone provides support for the body and protects the spinal cord, which is the main pathway for information between the brain and the rest of the body. The vertebrate skeleton also includes other important structures, such as the skull, ribs, and limbs. 
The skull protects the brain and houses the sense organs, while the ribs protect the heart and lungs. The limbs allow vertebrates to move around and explore their environment. Another important characteristic of vertebrates is their nervous system. Vertebrates have a centralized nervous system, which means that their brain and spinal cord are located in a single location. This allows for more efficient processing of information and more complex behavior. Vertebrates also have specialized sense organs, such as eyes, ears, and noses, which allow them to gather information about their environment. The combination of a centralized nervous system and specialized sense organs has allowed vertebrates to develop complex behaviors, such as hunting, mating, and social interaction. Reproduction is another important characteristic of vertebrates. Most vertebrates reproduce sexually, which means that they have separate male and female individuals that produce offspring through the fertilization of eggs by sperm. This allows for greater genetic diversity and the potential for adaptation to changing environments. Vertebrates also have a number of adaptations related to reproduction, such as the production of eggs or live young, courtship behaviors, and parental care. Finally, vertebrates are known for their diverse habitats and lifestyles. Vertebrates can be found in nearly every environment on Earth, from the depths of the ocean to the tops of mountains. Some vertebrates are adapted to life in water, such as fish and whales, while others are adapted to life on land, such as reptiles, birds, and mammals. Vertebrates have also evolved a variety of lifestyles, from solitary hunters to social animals that live in large groups. While the characteristics mentioned above are some of the most notable features of vertebrates, they are by no means the only ones. Vertebrates also have a number of adaptations related to their metabolism, immune system, and communication. For example, vertebrates have a complex metabolic system that allows them to convert food into energy more efficiently than most other animals. This is due to the presence of mitochondria, which are specialized organelles within cells that are responsible for energy production. Vertebrates also have a highly developed immune system that allows them to fight off pathogens and parasites, which is critical for survival in a wide range of environments. Communication is also an important aspect of vertebrate biology. Many vertebrates have evolved complex communication systems, such as vocalizations, body language, and chemical signaling, to communicate with members of their own species. These communication systems can be used for a variety of purposes, such as attracting mates, defending territory, and warning others of danger. In some cases, communication can even be used to deceive or manipulate other animals, such as when predators use camouflage to hide from their prey. The diversity of vertebrates is truly remarkable. There are over 66,000 species of vertebrates on Earth, ranging from the primitive lampreys to the highly evolved primates. This diversity has allowed vertebrates to occupy a wide range of ecological niches and adapt to changing environments over millions of years. In fact, vertebrates have survived several mass extinction events throughout their history, including the one that wiped out the dinosaurs, demonstrating their resilience and adaptability. In addition to their ecological importance, Vertebrates have also played a significant role in human culture and history. 
Many vertebrates are important sources of food, medicine, and materials, and have been hunted or raised by humans for thousands of years. Vertebrates have also been the subject of art, literature, and mythology, and have inspired scientists and naturalists to explore the natural world. One of the most interesting aspects of vertebrates is their evolutionary history. Vertebrates are believed to have evolved from a group of marine animals called chordates, which appeared in the fossil record over 500 million years ago. The earliest vertebrates were probably small, jawless fish-like animals, which gradually evolved into the wide range of forms we see today. Along the way, vertebrates have undergone numerous evolutionary innovations, such as the development of jaws, the evolution of bony skeletons, and the emergence of warm-bloodedness in some groups. Despite their evolutionary success, vertebrates also face a number of challenges in the modern world. Many species are threatened by habitat loss, climate change, pollution, and overexploitation by humans. In recent years, there has been growing concern about the decline of many vertebrate species, and efforts are underway to protect and conserve these animals. In addition to their ecological and cultural significance, vertebrates have also played an important role in scientific research. Vertebrates have been used as model organisms in a wide range of scientific disciplines, from genetics to neuroscience. For example, mice and rats are commonly used in studies of human disease, while zebrafish are used to study developmental biology. The study of vertebrates has also led to numerous scientific discoveries, such as the development of the theory of evolution. The discovery of DNA, and the identification of the genetic basis of many human diseases. One area of vertebrate research that has been particularly exciting in recent years is the study of animal behavior. Vertebrates exhibit a wide range of behaviors, from simple reflexes to complex social interactions. And understanding these behaviors can shed light on everything from animal communication to human psychology. One important area of research has been the study of animal cognition, or the mental processes that underlie behavior. For example, researchers have shown that some birds and primates are capable of using tools. Solving puzzles, and even exhibiting self-awareness, suggesting that these animals may have more complex mental abilities than previously thought. Another fascinating aspect of vertebrate biology is the study of animal migration. Many vertebrates, including birds, fish, and mammals, undertake long-distance migrations each year in search of food, breeding sites, or better environmental conditions. Arthropods are a diverse and highly successful group of animals, comprising over 80% of all known animal species. The defining characteristic of arthropods is their jointed exoskeleton, which provides protection, support, and a framework for muscle attachment. Arthropods are found in virtually every habitat on Earth, from the deepest oceans to the highest mountaintops, and play crucial roles in ecosystems as predators, prey, decomposers, and pollinators. In this essay, we will explore the key features of arthropods, including their anatomy, physiology, behavior, and ecological significance. Anatomy Arthropods have a segmented body plan, with a head, thorax, and abdomen, and an exoskeleton made of chitin. This exoskeleton is a tough, 
protective layer that helps arthropods resist desiccation and physical damage, but also limits their growth. Arthropods must periodically molt their exoskeleton in order to grow, a process known as ectasis. Arthropods also have paired jointed appendages, such as legs, antennae, and mouthparts, which are adapted for a wide range of functions, including locomotion, sensory perception, and feeding. Physiology Arthropods have an open circulatory system, in which hemolymph, the equivalent of blood, flows through a series of sinuses, and directly bathes the internal organs. Arthropods have a complete digestive system, with a mouth, esophagus, stomach, and intestine, and excrete waste products through specialized structures called malpighian tubules. Arthropods also have a variety of respiratory systems, including gills, trachea, and book lungs, which allow them to extract oxygen from the environment. Behavior Arthropods exhibit a wide range of behaviors, from solitary hunters to highly social organisms. Many arthropods, such as insects, communicate with each other through pheromones or sound. Arthropods also have a wide range of sensory modalities, including vision, hearing, touch, and chemical sensing. Some arthropods, such as spiders, have complex courtship rituals, while others, such as ants, exhibit sophisticated division of labor within their colonies. Ecological Significance Arthropods play vital roles in virtually every ecosystem on Earth. They are important pollinators of flowering plants, prey on other organisms, and are themselves preyed upon by larger animals. Arthropods are also important decomposers, breaking down dead plant and animal material and returning nutrients to the soil. Some arthropods, such as mosquitoes and ticks, are vectors for disease, while others, such as bees and silkworms, have important economic value. Arthropods are a remarkably successful group of animals, with over a million described species and perhaps many more still undiscovered. They have adapted to a vast array of different environments, from the humid tropics to the harsh deserts and from the depths of the ocean to the heights of the mountains. Their success can be attributed to a number of key features, including their ability to molt their exoskeleton and regenerate lost appendages, their efficient respiratory and circulatory systems, and their incredible diversity of sensory organs. One of the most distinctive features of arthropods is their jointed exoskeleton, which is made up of a series of plates that are connected by flexible joints. The exoskeleton is typically coated with a waxy layer that helps to prevent water loss, and it provides a strong framework for muscle attachment. However, the exoskeleton also poses a major challenge for arthropods, since it cannot grow if the animal increases in size. To overcome this limitation, arthropods must periodically shed their old exoskeleton and grow a new one. a process that can be energetically costly and that leaves the animal vulnerable to predators and other threats. Another key feature of arthropods is their respiratory and circulatory systems. Unlike vertebrates, which have a closed circulatory system that pumps blood through a series of vessels, Arthropods have an open circulatory system in which the blood-like hemolymph is pumped into sinuses and spaces around the organs. This system is less efficient than a closed circulatory system, but it does allow for rapid exchange of gases and nutrients. Arthropods also have a variety of respiratory structures, including gills, trachea, and book lungs, that allow them to extract oxygen from the environment. Arthropods are also notable for their diverse array of sensory organs. 
Many arthropods have complex compound eyes that can detect a wide range of colors and patterns. While others rely on specialized hairs or bristles to sense vibrations or chemicals in their environment. Some arthropods, such as spiders, have highly developed senses of touch and can detect even the slightest movements in their webs. Arthropods also have a remarkable ability to detect and respond to pheromones and other chemical signals, which are often used for communication within and between species. Perhaps the most remarkable thing about arthropods, however, is their incredible diversity. Arthropods come in an astonishing array of shapes and sizes, from microscopic mites to massive spiders with leg spans of more than a foot. They occupy nearly every ecological niche imaginable, from the ocean floor to the tops of trees, and they have adapted to a dizzying array of different lifestyles and feeding habits. Some arthropods, such as butterflies and bees, are important pollinators of flowering plants, while others, such as termites and leafcutter ants, are key players in nutrient cycling and soil formation. Still others, such as scorpions and spiders, are formidable predators that play important roles in controlling populations of other organisms. In addition to their fascinating biology and ecology, arthropods also have important economic and cultural significance. For example, many arthropods are valued for their aesthetic qualities, such as the colorful patterns and intricate structures of butterfly wings of the shimmering iridescence of beetle shells. Arthropods also have important economic uses, such as the production of silk by silkworms and the harvesting of honey by bees. Unfortunately, arthropods are facing a number of threats that are putting their continued survival at risk. One of the biggest threats is habitat loss, as human activities such as deforestation and urbanization continue to destroy the natural habitats that arthropods depend on. Climate change is also having a significant impact on arthropods, as rising temperatures and changing. Weather patterns alter the timing of seasonal events and disrupt the delicate balance of ecological relationships. In addition, pollution and the use of pesticides and other chemical agents are having a devastating impact on many arthropod populations, with serious implications for the functioning of entire ecosystems. To address these threats and ensure the continued survival of arthropods, it is important to develop strategies for conserving their habitats and reducing the impact of human activities. This may involve the establishment of protected areas, the implementation of sustainable land use practices, and the development of new technologies and management practices that minimize the impact of human activities on the environment. It is also crucial to promote public awareness and education about the importance of arthropods and their role in maintaining the health and functioning of ecosystems. One promising approach to promoting the conservation of arthropods is to promote ecotourism. which involves bringing visitors to areas where they can observe and learn about arthropods in their natural habitats. Ecotourism can provide a valuable source of income for local communities, while also helping to raise awareness about the importance of conserving arthropods and their habitats. The characteristics of the soft-bodied animals have always been a topic of interest among biologists and zoologists. These animals, also known as invertebrates, differ greatly from the vertebrates, which have a bony skeleton, in both anatomy and physiology. In this essay, we will discuss the various traits that define the soft-bodied animals and how they have adapted to their environment to survive. 
One of the most notable characteristics of soft-bodied animals is their lack of a rigid skeleton. Instead of a bony structure, these animals rely on their muscles and other internal structures to maintain their shape and support their weight. This allows them to be more flexible and agile, making it easier for them to move and escape from predators. Another defining feature of soft-bodied animals is their unique body plans. Unlike the vertebrates, which have a relatively uniform body plan, the invertebrates have a diverse range of shapes and sizes, with some being symmetrical and others asymmetrical. This diversity allows them to occupy a variety of ecological niches, from the deep sea to the forest canopy, and to feed on a wide range of food sources. The soft-bodied animals also have a different approach to reproduction and development compared to the vertebrates. Many species of invertebrates have a simple life cycle, in which they alternate between sexual and asexual reproduction. This allows them to rapidly colonize new environments and adapt to changing conditions. Additionally, many species have a complex life cycle, which includes a larval stage and metamorphosis. This allows them to transform into a different form and occupy different ecological niches throughout their life cycle. The soft-bodied animals have also evolved a range of adaptations to cope with their environment. For example, some species have developed a tough exoskeleton to protect themselves from predators, while others have evolved the ability to produce toxins or chemicals to deter predators. Additionally, many species have developed a symbiotic relationship with other organisms, such as the clownfish and sea anemones, or the termites and the gut microbes that help them digest cellulose. The soft-bodied animals also have a different type of nervous system compared to vertebrates. Instead of a centralized nervous system, many invertebrates have a decentralized nervous system, with multiple nerve clusters distributed throughout their body. This type of nervous system allows them to respond quickly to stimuli and helps them to coordinate their movements. In some species, such as the jellyfish and the sea anemones, the decentralized nervous system is organized into a simple sensory motor network, while in others, such as the octopuses and the squids, it is highly centralized and complex. In addition, soft-bodied animals have a unique respiratory system that allows them to exchange gases with the environment. Some species, such as the sponges, rely on diffusion to obtain oxygen, while others, such as the annelids and the mollusks, have specialized respiratory structures, such as gills or lungs, that increase their efficiency. The unique respiratory system of these animals allows them to survive in environments where the availability of oxygen is limited, such as in the deep sea or in soils. Another aspect that sets soft-bodied animals apart from vertebrates is their digestive system. Invertebrates have a wide range of digestive systems, from the simple, one-chambered stomach of the sponges to the highly specialized digestive systems of the mollusks and the arthropods. This diversity allows them to feed on a wide range of food sources, from simple sugars to complex polysaccharides, and to cope with varying environmental conditions. The soft-bodied animals have also evolved a range of sensory structures that allow them to detect their environment. These sensory structures include simple receptors, such as the light-sensitive cells and the eye spots of some flatworms, to highly specialized structures, such as the compound eyes of the arthropods. This diversity of sensory structures allows these animals to perceive their environment in different ways and to respond appropriately to changes in the environment. Worth noting that soft-bodied animals play a vital role in maintaining the balance of ecosystems. They form the base of many food chains, serving as primary producers or as prey for higher-level consumers. Additionally, they play important roles in nutrient cycling, decomposition, and pollination, and they help to maintain the health of ecosystems by providing habitats for other species. Furthermore, 
Soft-bodied animals are also known for their ability to adapt to extreme environments. For example, some species of invertebrates can survive in high-pressure environments, such as the deep sea, by producing specialized proteins that protect their cells from damage. Others can tolerate extreme temperatures, such as the hot springs in Yellowstone National Park, by producing heat shock proteins that help them to cope with sudden changes in temperature. This ability to adapt to extreme environments makes soft-bodied animals a valuable resource for biotechnology. And biomedicine, as they can provide valuable insights into the ways in which organisms cope with environmental stress. In addition, Soft-bodied animals also have a unique role in the study of evolution and biodiversity. Many species of invertebrates have a long fossil record, dating back hundreds of millions of years, which provides valuable evidence for the evolution of life on Earth. The fossil record also provides evidence for the evolution of key innovations, such as the development of heart exoskeletons and the evolution of wings, which have allowed some species to occupy new ecological niches and to diversify. Moreover, the soft-bodied animals are also an important source of biomedical compounds. Many species produce biologically active compounds, such as toxins and antibiotics, that have important applications in medicine and agriculture. For example, some species of sea slugs produce compounds that have potent anti-tumor and anti-inflammatory activities, while others produce compounds that have antiviral and antibacterial properties. The discovery of these compounds has led to the development of new medicines and treatments for a variety of diseases and conditions. Lastly, soft-bodied animals are also an important part of human culture and society. In many cultures, they are revered as symbols of life, death, and rebirth, and they are used as symbols in art, literature, and religion. Additionally, they play an important role in the tourism industry, as many people are fascinated by their unique biology and behavior. For example, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, which is home to thousands of species of soft-bodied animals, is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, attracting millions of visitors each year. In addition, soft-bodied animals are also known for their ability to regenerate lost body parts. Many species of invertebrates, such as the starfish and the sea cucumbers, can regenerate lost arms or other body parts, which allows them to survive predation and other forms of injury. This regenerative ability is the result of their ability to activate stem cells and other specialized cells, which allows them to replace damaged tissues and to restore normal function. The study of regenerative biology in soft-bodied animals has the potential to provide valuable insights into the mechanisms of tissue regeneration and to inform the development of new therapies for regenerative medicine. Moreover, soft-bodied animals also play a crucial role in the study of behavior and cognition.